there and welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good night in whatever part of the world. I see we've got a free few people in chat already so if you can let me know if you're actually hearing any of this yet, if the sound and vocals and sound and vocals, if the sound and picture and everything is okay and then we'll get started. So hi I'm Pam Duthie and I'm here to help you craft your career with creative marketing and artistic entrepreneur crafty <laughs> crafty advice I really have to do that a bit better don't I um, but if it's if it's your first time here welcome this is the live stream and oh Mia and Mia thought about joining us again uh, seeing as she had her moment of fame a couple of weeks ago but um, if you're catching this up on the replay, I just want to let you know what we're going to do just now. I've got a few YouTube channels I want to introduce you to. And then there's a, there's a Facebook page I want to direct all your attention to. And then the big, big point of today is we're going to be doing a shop review on Sizzling Scents shop. And this is hopefully helpful for everybody who's doing an Etsy shop, but also for anyone who's doing anything online to help a bit with the SEO. But Sizzling Scents is a very interesting shop as she's quite new. So hopefully some hints and tips and also get you all to have a look at, look at the shop. So thank you all for joining me. And today, Oh, that doesn't age well. I've given up the coffee for a week. So if I'm ready to bite anyone's head off, it's just because I've given up coffee. And this is chocolate orange tea. It started really nice, but when you leave it to sit for a while, it gets a bit bitter. Anyway, it was a nice idea and it smells lovely. So I hope everybody had a great week. And let's get on to looking at, at everything that I'm planning to look at. And Sharon's made it. Hi, nails by Sharon. Sharon is, well, I'll tell you more, more about her later, but I'm really happy that you made it to this tutorial, this tutorial, this live stream. Thank you, Sharon. Good to see you here. Um, I wonder, I wonder. Right, I've, I've given you a special badge, Sharon. Let's see if that shows up. But anyway, good to see you here. Um, and let's get started with what we're looking at. So, oh, I've actually got to turn the screen on for you guys as well. I'm good at this, classy. Right, so here we go. First thing I wanted to mention, if you haven't seen my video from Thursday on the needle felting the leaves and I explained in there, but I just want to direct you all here again. And everything I talk about is in the description of this video as well. But the Leaves for Lauren project, this is a lovely thing that um, they're, they're just collected. They're wanting basically everybody to make some leaves for the little little daughter to make a kind of a sensory tree that'll help her understand about seasons and all sorts of things and I think it's a lovely project so if you haven't already hop over to Leaves for Lauren when you're done here like I say the links in the description and I've got links in my Ben McFuzzy Lugs page and the Pam's Felting Friends group so if you want to pop over to either of them that would be awesome get the link pop over to Leaves for Lauren and all she wants you to do is in whatever medium that you make things in, felting, crocheting, knitting, anything like that. If you just want to make some leaves that can go on this tree that's going to be like up the wall and over the roof of this girl's bedroom. And I think it's an awesome project. So pop over and have a look at that. Ah, is there an address to send them to? Yeah, um, Sharon, what you have to do, I think she's not wanting to put her her address out live, so you just, which I don't blame her, so just message her on Facebook when you've got your leaves done and she'll send you her address and then you can post it out. It's all individually. I don't want to share her address on any of the pages because obviously she's not sending her address. But if you get anything done, just pop her a private message or ask ask in the group for her to private message you her address 
and she'll she'll let you know where she gets them and it's really cute I don't want to show too much no I'm not going to show the page you have to go and look there but it's really sweet because she's showing her daughter opening all the leaves and everything and Lauren's delighted with all the little packages that are coming in with little leaves and little animals which is absolutely so cool right so yeah totally get over and see leaves for Lauren right we've done this now I have a link Dr. Sten Egberg is my, my YouTube friend. He's he's a great person, but I meant to share this with you a couple of weeks ago. This is a video he talks about wrist pain, and I just thought this is such a super idea for us needle felters because basically if you if you haven't already heard me talk about most years I get I think it's some kind of RSI or carpal tunnel or I don't know what you would call it but I get tremendous pain in my wrists coming up to Christmas from felting too much. Thankfully I didn't this year and I think that's partly to do with the needle felting holder so that instead of holding on a tiny little thing I've got a slightly wider grip which I think has been nicer on my hands. But Dr. Sten has lots of health and fitness tips is really really interesting stuff but this one just sort of spoke to me so much and it's so obvious when you think about it but I need to tell on me is basically it's talking about the carpal tunnel like when people are typing away on computers and that can do can cause them great pain and basically the simplest thing he's saying is to to stretch out in the opposite direction so if we're sitting felting like this all tight felt in this direction just take time out every so often to completely stretch your wrists out completely relax everything in the opposite direction of what you've just been doing like I say such simple advice but really really worth <laughs> worth paying attention to because I'm not kidding I have spent several years round about December I spend most of it in a kind of wrist brace just to rest my wrist when I'm not felting and it's really quite painful so really super tip get over and watch him and watch his other videos and he won't thank me for this but as a as a sneaky thing if you go into his channel and you go into videos and then look for the oldest some of his oldest videos aren't him being all wonderfully and professional as a doctor before he was doing all this he was an athlete at the olympics and so there's some films of him at the olympics in like I can't remember if it's the late 80s or the early 90s. It's fantastic to see. So go over and watch that. It's 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 great fun to snoop at people's old videos. And if you didn't realise, actually, I'll, I'll do this just now. If you didn't realise how you could do this on YouTube, because I know some people are more Facebook, they're coming through. So I've clicked on his channel, Dr. Sten Ickberg, and we go into videos. And then up at the top right here, we've got date added newest, but you could go to most popular or date added oldest. So if we do this, this this is great for any any channel. You can have a snoop at where they came from, what the ones that they've been brave enough to leave up. So here we go. Um, and got some videos of them throwing the discus and things. It's great to go back and have a look at people's old videos. I snoop at these things, which is great. Right, next thing, yes, I will oh, get my big ugly face off, you don't need to see that again. Um, but if you haven't already checked out my video on Monday, where I did a bit of a collaboration, let's see if I can actually find him, did a little collaboration with Gord Eisman. Now, Gord is a great bloke and he does, he has loads of videos on helping you with video editing which is awesome and really helpful as I explained in this in this video how we can make a shop video for Etsy and it's a great way to connect with people and so Gord is a great person who can coach you through this he has videos but he's also a great friendly chap and he he does one-to-one -one coaching and everything else um, so I did a little collaboration with him but the other reason to check him out now this isn't begging for anything but if you remember a few weeks ago I talked about the the changes in YouTube where they were stopping demonetization for small channels and I know this applies to you Sharon and quite a few other people that kind of listen to me that um, the YouTube's changing its policy that you have to have 1,000 viewers and 
4,000 hours of watch time in a year to be monetized now, which has hit a lot of people so hard. And Gord was just struggling with this as well. He had the right number of subscribers. He has slightly more subscribers than me, but he just didn't have the same, the, the watch time. And rather than letting this hit him and impact him in a bad way, I mean, I'm sure he did, like everybody, the head went down a wee bit and you did a bit of a pouty lip and said, oh, that's not fair. But he picked himself up and he decided rather than say this is a bad thing and this is hurtful for us, he decided they're giving you till the 20th of February to hit these targets. So he saw this rather as a challenge rather than a terrible thing. And I thought this attitude was great. So he's really upped his game for the month. He's done things out of his comfort zone. He's pushed his channel, like I say, even working with me, but he's also worked with some, some big YouTubers. He's done some interviews. He's started doing live streams, which is a really nerve wracking thing. And like I say, trying to get this to be a challenge to get himself to this 4,000 hours by the 20th of February. And yeah, secret thing, because I know it's, it's just a few of us here. I really think he's just got, I think he's got the hours, but I'm waiting for his announcement. But he did a really great live stream with Brian G. Johnson, who you'll have seen a few weeks ago, did a little spotlight on me, which was so lovely. But Brian's a fantastic YouTuber and agreed to do a live stream with Gord. And I'm pretty sure during that live stream, they hit the hours. But um, analytics are delayed a couple of days in most of YouTube. So we'll probably only be finding out tonight that he did that. So fingers crossed. But pop over and see Gord. Like I say, that attitude is great. And he's just got some great advice for people who want to start out and thinking about doing an Etsy video or even doing YouTube because it's great fun. And like I said, with Sharon, so I'm so glad that Sharon Nails is, Nail by Sharon H <laughs> is here because I just wanted to tell you all to get over and have a look at her channel as well. Sharon is my very first Patreon, which if you don't know, I believe I have links below to Patreon, but it, it's just like a little place where you support creators and I don't like to make a big, big deal of this. Um, it's just something if people are interested in, you can go and support me and hopefully I'll be able to support you a little bit extra, give a little bit extra help and advice to either your shops or just any questions and answers you have, I'll be able to get to them a wee bit quicker. But Sharon actually contacted me and asked me if I had any, um, if I had Patreon. So that was so good of her. <laughs> um, but anyway, I just wanted to show you her channel just now, her YouTube channel, and you should pop over. Lovely crafty thing, a bit different, but still great fun is nail art. I do follow quite a lot of nail artists, and I believe I found Sharon at her penguins one, which was a bit random because I think she came up on one of my videos where I make the pom-pom penguins and I make needle felter penguins. And then her nail art penguins came up. I think nail art's so cool. I I don't wear nail polish much. I used to wear it all the time, but I found it was making my nails weak. I must have been using the the wrong <laughs> the wrong stuff or something. So maybe Sharon can help me out with that, um, not to have weak nails. But I do at the minute I'm painting my thumb. Now I need to repaint it. So I'm, I'm actually thinking of trying one of Sharon's tutorials for this because it's cracked way down in the quick and that's going to hurt. So I thought I'm using... So <laughs> terrible tip here, but just to splint the nail, I put a bit of loo roll, you take it down to one ply and then put a coat of nail polish on, stick the loo roll on top of the crack in the nail and then put another bit of new bit of nail polish on and it splints up splints up the nail and it's just to stop it cracking so and I did that and I thought well it's kind of cool to have one funky nail and the rest all plain so there you go that's that's my wee tip and I'm going to try and have a wee go at one of Sharon's tutorials <laughs> So, and oh, thank you so much for your kind words there, Sharon. That's lovely. She says I should make it a big deal, but it's it's difficult to, you know what it's like. It's not easy to ask ask people for for money and anything and everything. But you'll see the the 
blue you've got the blue spanner by your name this this means now that Sharon has the power Sharon's my my moderator because because you are a youtuber it's a great thing I've been put on as a moderator in a few um live streams for other people and I think it's a great thing it just means you have the power to block people you can put up um what's the words you can put up URL links to websites and things whereas other other people can't do that so you can be spammy and everyone else can't but that's why you've gone blue if you weren't sure about that ah she's saying I can use glue instead of nail polish and file it smooth ah that's a good idea yes because it is a bit lumpy but I'm just not letting anyone see close enough thank you so much for that tip I have to when I take the nail polish off I'll see how much my nails have grown and see if I can file that back past the crack anyway but great tip because I am always they, they all grow to a lovely length and then one of them there's just a wee crack in it and like oh I don't want to have to cut it right so on to our shop review and this is sizzling scents and I love I love in the little description here the the tag scents to melt your cares away doesn't that just sound lovely <laughs> what why am I going to drink that again we know that's bogging put that down all right so this is Chris at Sizzling Scents Chris is in my Pam's Felting Friends group if you're not in that you can pop along leave a link to your shops if you want me to look at them and I'll get back to them I usually do about one a month because it takes a bit of time to deep dive into this but also hopefully it's something that can help everybody else a little bit as well because you can see what my thinking is um, and see maybe get some ideas you can get some ideas from what other people are doing that's working and you can get some ideas hopefully from from my ideas so <clears throat> excuse me losing voice already so straight away looking at Chrissy's shop looking at sizzling scent the first thing is this banner which I think is fantastic this is a proper aspirational banner you get a, an idea about kind of what this is going to be all about hopefully um, seeing some some candles and some flowers it's just bright and colorful and I think the word I'm looking for is aspirational but it just inspirational that's it it just gives you a great idea what's going on there so banner totally love it if I was fussy I would probably talk about the focus of the picture seems to be over here on the stones a little bit possibly a wider depth of field but actually it's not that important <laughs> it's a fantastic picture oh Sharon asked me a question about Etsy um, let's have a look I don't see a question about Sharon could could you pop it in again and I'll, I'll answer it sorry I can't I can't see but if you pop in your question again and then I'll, I'll get you there Sharon okay so banner fantastic Chris I think you're doing a great job um, and I love like I say sense to melt your cares away is fantastic I in in this section people often talk about either what they make or they'll mention if there's any problems or anything but actually I'm perfectly happy with just that as a tag um, you're just a relatively new shop with 25 sales so I think already you're doing pretty awesome um, shop picture the same as the banner yeah, it's alright it would be nice to see something else and again the same for the shop owner picture I know I'm guilty of this as well I've got a picture of a wee dog um, you've got a picture of your items really people do prefer to see faces I'm gonna have to change mine and put my face in and I, I would kind of recommend that we want to buy from you I know it's a big deal and I avoided putting myself up on on the internet on these things for so long you kind of don't want to be putting you out there it's the internet but what sets Etsy apart from everywhere else is we're buying from a person you know it, so there's that human connection it 
it just helps people the more personal touch you can put into it to say you know I'm not Walmart I'm not Asda I'm not Lush or whatever other mass producing place I am an individual person and that gives that connection it's not a big deal but it would just help oh hi there Chris um, you like to melt your cares away too absolutely um, hold on Ah, Sharon, if you're posting similar items, can you cut and paste your descriptions and the things, or should they be different? Right, great question, actually. Yes and no. Um, basically, you don't even need to cut and paste your descriptions. Etsy gives you the, the option when you're in when you're in one listing, you can just copy, and then that just copies the whole listing, you know, makes a whole new listing, duplicates it, there's the word I'm looking for. So you can do this, but I wouldn't have them completely identical. I don't believe Etsy penalizes it, but Google doesn't like identical content. So I would go in and make, you would maybe have certain things that you want the same all the time that, that sit at the bottom, links to social media, anything like that. But you want some differences in each listing. So yes you can cut and paste things across but make sure that there's there's enough differences you want to be saying slightly different things in each listing if that makes sense and that helps the algorithm a bit more it says oh look this person's an expert on these things but it's not all just the same identical listing so make sure and put a little bit of personalization into every listing And also the other thing you want to do with a with listing is each listing you're wanting to optimize slightly differently anyway. This is something I have to go through in my shop and do as well. So don't ever go to my shop and take me as an example for these things because this is something I've got to work on. But each listing, imagine if I've got one listing that I'm really trying to optimize for a needle felted dog and then the next listing I would maybe want to optimize for dog sculpture so these are two different things so my descriptions would be slightly more they would both probably mention it was a needle felted dog but it would just all be slightly different one would be more of the focus for the needle felted dog and the other one would be more focusing on a dog sculpture so if you had a a bunch of bears you could add in the different accessories yes yes exactly um yeah if you had like four different bears and they all so you could say i'm making this up just now um but you could say you know blue bear with the pink hair clip um bear with I don't, bear with a the flower, there we go, I'm thinking of things now, <laughs> bear with a flower, so all just slightly different, and the other thing you can do is each bear, you can link in that description to one of the other ones, so you could say, if you like this, check out the, the bear with the pink hair clip here at this link, and so they can all link to each other, you know, a different listing as well, which is a really cool, useful thing, because what you want to do is keep people in your shop for as long as possible, so if they look at the one list and then they go, oh, click at this, click, and they go to another, so you go around lots of different pages on your shop, and that's like a really positive interaction. Okay, back to, back to Chris, sorry. <laughs> So yeah, the first impression is a really positive start to the shop there. It looks awesome. Scrolling down again, featured listings and then into the shop. Oh, announcement. Yep, yeah, that's cool. Uh, free shipping on $40 or more. Um, new scents coming soon. Awesome. So I'll say to start with, Definitely, you have two sections in your shop for wax melts and candles, which is cool. Um, you could actually make out more sections because you're allowed to do this. I would, as you seem to have 
set different sizes which is really good possibly you could have your 4 ounce wax melts 8 ounce wax melts 16 ounce wax melts all those different sections so that makes it easier for people to search you know if they know they're only wanting to spend 3 pounds or whatever it is in your currency then they know you click on the four round section and everything's grouped together for them but I know you don't have that many listings in your shop but hopefully I'll be able to help you with that and the same with the candles you could split them up into sizes as well the pictures aren't bad by no means are they bad and I completely love these emoji sets this is a bit unique I've not seen much of this um, they all look pretty it's bright you could, as you're photographing on white, you could completely take out the background with an app like Photofuse, which is really great for doing that. It's um, It will just give you the stark white background rather than the slightly, slightly textured, I don't know, linen sheet, whatever it is that they're sitting on. The pictures are clear. Um, what I tend to like, if you're doing scented things like scented candles, it's good to see the, say the candle in situ or the burner. You know, it would be really cool to see your wax melts kind of beside a beautiful fireplace with, with the candle on, with them just slightly starting to melt or something. That just gives people a better idea. Or if it's an apple pie scent, have apples next to them or a hot apple pie and ice cream next to it ah does she ship overseas it would be good to see if we can support let's have a nosy um shipping shipping she does ship to the united kingdom yes the the app is photo fuse i will I do have a video on that if you Google for that, but just search for Photofuse and it's just the simplest, the simplest, well it's a website rather than an app. I think you can only use it on your computer, but what you do, it links to your shop. So it's going to ask you to log in with your shop and link to your shop. Hi Mallory. Um, it's going to ask you to link to your shop and when you do that it pulls across all your listings so you can edit your pictures there in it without having to take anything across and you just open up the picture and you click on the areas you want it to keep you click on the background tell it to do its thing and if you're happy with it you just tell it to upload that to Etsy so it's all kind of integrated it basically just cleans cleans up the background and it makes such a difference just for a really quick thing um, and that's see okay see you in a bit Sharon um, all the all the shops you see with a beautiful white background they they're using either using something like Photoshop but Photofuse is just so quick so quite a lot of people are using it hi there Samantha Jane or morning well it's half four in the afternoon here but I know we're all in different time zones so what time is it with everybody Okay, so anyway, t these look totally awesome. I love candles and wax melts. And I want big, big tick, big thumbs up here for just being a really good niche in the shop. Basically, we know what this niche is. It's basically so scented soy wax products, candles and these um, wax melts, which is fantastic. Oh, Carol, it's snowing a blizzard in Birmingham. Yep, it just it's just stopped snowing here up. I'm just outside Glasgow. Lovely blue sky at the minute, but it was it was pretty bad. 11:30 a.m. for Samantha. Right, so for reviews, it's quite annoying the way the review system is on Etsy. We used to get reviews practically all the time, but now it's it can be quite hard to get reviews. But having four, even if they're all the same person it's it's still pretty cool to have some reviews that gives a little a little help for your shop so that's awesome and uh, Mallory I'm in Paisley just outside Glasgow in Scotland it's four, well 4.29 in the afternoon here so we're quite a bit ahead of you all right and 
I totally want to say well done in the about section for having a shop video. Most people, sorry, most people don't have a video, so that makes you stand out. So just having a look at all these as they go by. I love the fact this is a slideshow with there's some music I just silenced and just showcasing the different scents. Um, do I use more than one needle at a time when I'm needle felting, Samantha? I don't actually. I tried. I just, the only time I do is I have a multi-tool for flat felting sometimes, but I tried, because my sculptures are really so little, I'll get this wee guy I'm working on, oh, everything's falling down, because my sculptures are so little, I just had to, I just found it too clumsy with more than one needle. I think if you're making a really large project, yeah, you probably can't really see that. Um, hang on, I'll go. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, anyway, because my sculptures are so little, I found that two, two or more needles just started to get a bit awkward. I felt them flexing. Oh, lavender dreams, that looks lovely. Um, welcome back, Sharon. Uh, Mallory loved Glasgow when you visited. Oh, fantastic. It's a great city. I do I do love it. I won't lie. Um, where, whereabouts are you? Um, how did I learn to felt, Cindy? I actually, um, we'll just, I, I started to felt, was it about eight years ago? I was walking around a class, craft store with my mum and we found the book Felt Dogs. I do have a video on it. Yeah, I got a review of the book Felt Dog Fleece Dogs, I think it is, in what in my review section. And I was pretty bored walking around the craft store and then I saw this book and it just kind of leapt out at me. And basically that was it. I saw the book. We ordered stuff online and I started felting. I believe I have in that video I have pictures of the first first dog I made. I I went straight. I know I advise in my videos to start with something so sil simple like a ball. But I started right away and decided to try and make my dog. And I was so happy with how he turned out. I mean he looks terrible, he's barely felted. But I was happy and I loved the process. So that that was it. I just did that. I, I learnt to felt by felting basically. I looked at the book, it gave me some ideas, but I just I remember sort of stabbing in to get his shaggy ears. I'm looking here because he's he's lying on the couch next to me to get his kind of shaggy ears and I was just like amazed. I was like, look, look, you can get all these long fluffy bits and of course you can because it's wool. But just that first felting did such a great job and then just keeping making stuff. And yeah, I'll play more of the video. But yeah, Sharon, you're right. This is a really great video. Um, it completely showcases all the scents. And this this was kind of what I was saying to to you. See see when we've got the listings, the listings of the pictures of the scents. Well, you have brilliant pictures of all these kind of things in your slideshow. So you could put. Well, I'll get more into it later, but you could put, if you're having an apple pie scent, or what were some, it was a caramel, wasn't it? Or, yeah, apple butter caramel. Well, you could put that picture with a picture of your wax melts next to it, and that would just look so much more appealing. Not that the wax melts don't look appealing, but it's just great to see the thing that they're supposed to smell of. So that picture, beautiful dream weaver, and superimpose your melts on top of it. And you can use that if you've removed the background in PhotoFuse, then that's a good way you can then, on a photo editing software, you can pop one on top of the other, or just have them sitting next to each other. It would pop and look really awesome. But yeah, that's a really nice video, and I don't disagree, Sharon. The only thing I would say that could up its game, there's a couple of things I would love to see in shop videos. That's great for us to go, oh, here's the product. But it would be awesome to see a little bit about the process, again, to really know. I know most people don't want to go on camera. It's 
it's nerve wracking. It's I've been doing it for quite a while now, and it's nerve wracking. Um, but it does help. Like like I've had a lot of people message me and say they think they know me and stuff just from talking on the camera like this. It gives a bit more of a connection. You know the person, so. It does help to do that, but even if you don't feel like that, you know, just adding a little bit at some point in the video, showing a little bit of the process, just pouring some of your melts into molds, adding the scents, you know, mixing stuff up would just be like a little, a little bit awesome, <laughs> if you know what I mean. That would just add more of a connection. It's just all about this showing that we're real people. This isn't mass manufactured. This is us making stuff. Um, Samantha, what other vid what other items do I felt? I've seen dragons, cats and dogs. Do I make people? I have made some human type sculptures. I'll see I'll see if I can find what I'm thinking of. I'm not very practiced at human sculptures. Um, that's me. Um, oh, I could have just opened that straight away. I'm, I've, I've not practiced doing humans so much. It's just something I do now and again, but I've done some fantasy figures. So there's, there's this, this center guy that I made. It was years ago that I got, um, I was asked to do a shop display, window display for The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. So I was making some fantasy figures. So I had to do some human types. I'm not that practiced at faces yet though. So that that is that's something when I get time, I would love to, to make more, but I'm flat out making animals just now, to be honest. I'm mainly making dogs because I've got a huge backlog of orders just now, so I have to do that. Um, oh, thanks for the tutorial on bats and merino wool. I know where I was going wrong. Fantastic, Carol. Um, if you haven't already been looking at Cassandra Hall doing her, her felting, I've actually just made a playlist on my on my YouTube channel going through what Cassandra's doing, but she started with a kit. It was her that made me think of this. She started with a, a kit that was the the merino tops, and she did great with it, but just the difference once she got hold of the bats just makes it so much easier. I, it's a pig that they send you such... It's not terrible wool. Merino's expensive and super wool. It's just not the easiest to use as core wool. Uh, Photofuse is... Um, it's not really an app. It's a computer... It's a website. So you have to do it on the PC as far as I know. I haven't tried it on on my phone. I'll get that's that's a good good idea, Sharon. I'll have a look and see if it works on the phone as well. But it's it's on the PC that I've been using it. It's not so much an app as a website. Right. And here oh fantastic. Also in the about section I can't get that to open just now. My computer's running slow. I've got so much open to be honest. So a description of all the different types of flavors, fl scents, <laughs> um, which just sounds lovely. I, I'm a sucker for anything cinnamon, to be honest. But it's great to see all the, the different scents that exist in in your shop, which I completely love. And it's nice to have these descriptions of them. So really nice, got the about so you've got everything filled out nicely in the shop. A little bit mentioning Chris themselves, um, making wax melts for over three years, which is fantastic. This is you know giving us a bit of the process, is fantastic letting us know about you. Um you could add more in here, tell us where you make them, what your inspirations are, how you make them, just give us a little bit more because people do love 
to read about you. People love your story. It's surprising. I avoided doing these things for ages as well. But people just love to know about people. They love to buy from people. So, you know, let us let us know a little bit about you, how you got into, into all of this. And, um, yeah, policies are all filled in, which is absolutely awesome. So, sorry if I'm scrolling too quickly. Uh, Sharon has a Mac. I think it would probably work on a Mac. Because it, it's a web page. I tell you what, you get you have a try on the Mac and let me know if it works. Um, I'll put links. I'll put links when I get it up. In fact, let's do it here. Have I got it right? Here it is. So there is the website everybody and this it's great it's just showing you an example of what it does is it basically takes your normal photograph and removes removes your background and just makes it stand out and white and that is what it does and it is really simple um i don't want to log in or anything just now because then you'll you'll see my passwords uh, no i don't want to log in because that's not what we're doing today but it does it's great, especially what the pictures that show in here is items that have a high contrast to the background. So it struggles a bit. If I have a white dog, it can really struggle to pick them out. But in normal stuff, it really it does what it's showing on the tin. And you can see just what a difference that makes. Okay, back, <laughs> back to the shop we're supposed to be looking at. But I'm loving the chat. Thank you so much, guys, for keeping me on my toes. Right. So I just wanted to have... It's always good to look at the competition in any niche that you're in. And so obviously the niche here is wax melts and candles. So let's have a look at what we have in this. Well, first row is your adverts. But if we have a look at the competition, it just gives us an idea of the types of the pictures that are out there as well. And to try and do stuff to stand out from them. Now, now we have, again, because decomping has stopped, so we've got two of the same right at the start. But they must be doing pretty well. And I'm looking, I hadn't seen this thing before. I'm not been keeping up to date on stuff, but now we've got a best bestseller tag coming up to tell us something's been selling really well which is interesting but the first three are from two different shops and they have pretty much got the same the same style going on there so to stand out we'd have to be a bit of a different style and personally I'm not the biggest fan of this splitting across across the middle of the screen because everything just looks so little um, but if you could have them at like these are doing dupes of perfumes so I would have the bo bottle of perfume and a pile of your wax melts or something that would look even better um, but yeah it's just finding a way how to stand out now these are these are all really colorful and they will be that's the thing so I think the kind of aspirational pictures like in the banner here something like this would totally stand out I know I know this is difficult, <laughs> difficult to set up, but it's something totally different that's not been done with everybody else. So that could be a theme of making it look more spa-like, having a rolled-up towel and some candles next to your, next to your wax melts, or having them in a burner. I, I admit, love a bit of fire with something. If if they had the bit of that yellowy glow with the fire and candlelight and water and stuff, that would really pop off the screen here. Or just anything just a wee bit different. Ah, here we go. Something I said, putting them in the burner and letting it melt. Now, that's not the best picture in the world. But it's it's a good start. Um, what about watermarks? Would I say to use them? You can do. I personally don't. It really depends. Um, if someone's determined they can remove a watermark fairly quickly, the most important thing to remember is 
that these things, you know, all the photographs that they're, they're your copyright, they already belong to you. So you can get anyone, you know, any website, you can chase them up and get them to take down their pictures. Um, yes, if you're finding your shop is being cloned by some of these dodgy other shops that are just stealing other people's listings pretty much you could put up a watermark yourself um, and that might deter them a little bit thankfully I've never needed to but I know I know some people do obviously if your if your shop is photography like I do use watermarks on my my digital art and my stencils and things because that's something that people could copy you know that's I'm I'm selling that so I don't want them to just take a screenshot of it so yes a watermark across pictures you know paintings drawings anything like that but pictures of physical 3d things yeah if someone steals my picture and then suggests they're going to make something like mine their customer's going to be pretty disappointed because it's not going to look like mine um but yeah, so the wax melts, they're all fairly similar and not that imaginative and not that amazing photography. So I think you could stand out from them if you really just put a bit of bit of thought into the picture and just you know something something beautiful. Like I like if you've got an apple pie candle or something sitting on a on a wood table with a fire in the background and a mug of steaming hot coffee or something you know just just make people think of how they would use them or you know with a Christmas tree in the background or you know just just anything to put them in context but you're really going to stand out from the crowd with beautiful photography now I don't know if if the banner was your own work then you can completely do beautiful photography by yourself you know what you're doing but it possibly wasn't but one thing that I did that really helped when I was starting out in my shop well when I've been going on a bit when I was really trying to boost my shop a friend of mine's sister was actually a photography student at the time so I paid her I commissioned her to take some pictures for me it wasn't as expensive as a proper shoot but she got some experience and I got some professional photographs so that's a really great way to go if you don't want to learn about photography for yourself you know everybody's got a mate just put up on your Facebook page ask if anyone's into photography sort out what a sensible price might be and get them to make you some really good pictures because in it's a fairly competitive niche you know there's quite a lot of people making these things and they're not amazing pictures so you could really pop out it wasn't your picture I, I didn't I wasn't sure but I wasn't sure but it is I'm repeating myself there it is a beautiful picture but but do you see what I mean by everybody's got pretty meh pictures if if you spent a bit of time and money to get that kind of fantastic picture then you're going to pop off the page um, oh Sharon's saying there's been a lot of buzz on Instagram and Facebook about people stealing photos so everyone's watermarking it's true the thing is there's a lot of buzz from the people that it happens to so we always things always sound much bigger than they are because you you hear from the people that it's happened to you don't hear from the thousands of people that it hasn't happened to but but yes certainly you know watermark paintings, watermark photographs, you know, those physical things. But even then, your original image is going to be so much better quality. You know, you put something up to Facebook and it reduces the quality millions of times. Oh, hi, Pandas Puppets. Good to see you here. Um, pan if you want to check out Pandas Puppets YouTube channel, anyone who's who's about here, um, really great. We seem to we seem to end up in all the same live streams as each other, so it's really quite cool. Uh, Chris is going to be redoing pictures and taking notes. That's that's fantastic. Like I say, there's nothing wrong with your pictures, and just using Photofuse to brighten them up will be great. Um, but 
I just I just found that hiring someone I mean she really didn't charge me much at all um, and it really it just really helps and the thing is especially with you you're going to be able to recreate what you're making so you only need one lot of really good pictures so bonus um yeah oh yeah we've already looked at the reviews yeah wax candles the same thing here is they all look much of a muchness oh thank you yes i've i've had a pretty restful weekend just just working away just by myself yes sharon's mentioned a photo box these are great as well i started in a cheap five pound photo box from eBay I think it was and it makes it much easier to cut out the background and it diffuses the light and everything's better I'm trying different things now but it was a great way to start it's absolutely a great way to get good pictures um, so again looking at the candles is the same kind of thing now I love the white background but what I'm seeing is because it becomes such a habit, we've either got white or wood, you know, what's what's popping out. I really kind of, well, that's nice. It's the same shop. But I really love a picture like this. It pops out because you've got splashes of colours. And I know what that candle's going to smell like because you've got everything sitting there. So I really like that. Um... What else have we got? Yeah, but there's very few are really popping and making. If you search for a soy candle, what ones there make like pop out? Actually, probably because I'm a bit of an old goth, um, the black skull. But it's also a beautiful photograph. Beautiful photographs catch people's eye. Beautiful photographs get shared on Pinterest. And oh yeah, this is a nice one because again, cinnamon and clove. I can see exactly what it is. So that's that's a good. Oh, it's the same, the same shop as I just liked below. So yeah, they're they're doing something good. They're giving us an idea of what's in the scent. Oh Samantha, you're most welcome uh, joining the group. Yep, no problem at all. Anyone who wants to, it's such a friendly place. Thankfully, we're a nice small community, so it really makes makes a big difference. Everyone's friendly and totally supportive. Okay, all right. Now onto the spreadsheets. Um, so what I had a look, I just randomly clicked on, I think it was the eight ounce, just for a bit of SEOing. So yes, it was the eight ounce. So look, the title was eight ounce scented soy wax melt. Delicious scents makes a great gift. Home fragrance just for you. And the tag is lemon scented melts, fruit salad, wax melt, strawberry wax melt, scented wax melts. And I'm not going to read them all, but you can get get a feel for what's going on there. So. Um, some time ago you saw a video about bundling up items on Etsy but I can't figure it out is there some tutorial available um, I'll get back to you actually I do I do have but I can't quite remember but some of the latest I think a couple of Mondays ago the ones where I'm talking about adding listings to my mum's shop that gives you an idea of making like a series of listings so um, in her shop we were trying to rank for like Harris Tweed so we put up four or five different items that were made with Harris Tweed and a couple of them were to optimize and had the word Harris Tweed right there right at the start of the title whereas some others also were Harris Tweed but we would optimize for like Scotty Dog Silhouette or something like that but listing four or five all similar items over the course of about a week meant that we started to rank for that item if that makes sense <laughs> the school ones <laughs> jumped out for Sharon as well okay I'm not the only one so I suppose that's that's the thing is something a bit different stands out because 
it's a sea of all the things looking the same. So, you know, if you if you stand out, whether it's necessarily for a good or a bad thing, but something that catches the eye is what people are going to look at twice and possibly even buy. So just trying to find ways to stand out. Okay, so I had a wee search on Etsy rank. Um, again, a website. I think most of you are familiar with it. If you aren't, EatsyRank.com, fantastic website if you're using Etsy at all. I wish um, this this is like the equivalent of morning fame for YouTube. So if you're a YouTuber, morning fame. If you're an Etsy person, Etsy rank. And I searched out some keywords, looking at some of the things that you yourself use and some that similar shops use. And I will admit you're in a pretty difficult niche for ranking, but I'm pretty confident we can do it because you are ranking for some things, which is fantastic. So we started off scented soy wax melts, which is exactly what we make and is what you make, not we, exactly what you make and is in your title. So this is something you are slightly optimizing for. This is a tag we're aiming for. Um, and you've got yourself on page three for this already. So this is fantastic. It's a high competition term. So this is great. It's telling me that even though your shop's fairly new, you can still rank for these terms. Unfortunately, the demand and the engagement is very low. But I think that's got to be to do with the fact that everybody looks so meh. There's nothing kind of standing out. So you look at that and you go and search for something else. I think if you pop off the page, then that's going to you know, we might increase the engagement there. But so scented soy wax melt is a good term that we're going to keep working on a bit. And lemon scented melt, unfortunately, very low competition. The demand is so low that it's unknown and engagement is very low. I'd hope cinnamon melt would be a bit higher because that's, that's what I would search for. If I was looking for a candle or wax melt or any kind of thing like that. I wouldn't just say wax melt. I wouldn't say candle. I would type in the scent I want. So cinnamon or Christmas or apple or lemon. I would go for them specifically. So we're saying cinnamon melts has low competition, which is fantastic. And you are on page one for that. Um, medium demand, but very low engagement. So again, I think it's just not inspiring people, not you personally, everybody that's that's there. But again, it's good you've got on page one for both of these. So this kind of means to get to page one for these, we don't have to work really hard to optimize them. It doesn't actually have to be in the title, but I'm going to talk about something that it might be an idea if it is. Um, wax melts you're not ranking for at all but this is a great high competition but very high engagement so people who just search for wax melts actually buy stuff that they see there so that's good to note so we are going to want to try and get you optimized and get you on page one for wax melts and it's not going to be easy <laughs> but I've got a strategy uh, soy wax melts again is very high and medium demand and medium engagement um, if I hadn't already explained if you don't remember engagement just means if someone sees it how likely they are to buy it not necessarily your item but anything off that page that they see again cinnamon wax melts low competition medium demand which isn't bad it means a medium amount of people are searching for them strawberry wax melts Soy wax tarts. Now this was just thinking a different way. Some people call the wax melts wax tarts. And I think tartlets is another term people use. It's something you've not been optimizing for just now. It is a high competition, but we've already seen you can rank for a high competition, but a medium demand and a medium engagement. So this might be actually a really good term to attempt to optimize for. Uh, scented melts again it's not great it's really high competition but low engagement and wax tarts is high competition and high engagement so really we're looking at possibly wanting to rank for a soy wax 
so where are we? Wax melts, soy wax melts, and soy wax tarts, and wax tarts. Now these are tricky because basically it looks like everything that's got any kind of decent engagement is high to very high competition. But there's there's a way around this, I think. Because when we look at your shop, you've got all these thing all these scents that you can you can choose, which is fantastic. So I'm going to suggest that you could make an absolute ton of listings. Now, if I've not seen any for a wee while, if anyone sees any come up, but Etsy sometimes does free listings. But even if the free listing codes aren't going about, it's still worth, at the 20 cents for each listing, it's really worth this. So you could make a singular listing for several different fragrance so instead of just having a random soy wax melts pick your fragrance you could have cinnamon soy wax melts apple pie soy wax tartlets and have six or seven of the most popular type scents as individual listings and you optimize for that but you're you're adding in each of them is going to have one of the titles either soy wax melts wax tartlets any of these important keywords that we want to rank for you have that in your title um, the weight you want the most important thing near the start of your title so it could if you were aiming for say soy wax melts so you would say soy wax melts cinnamon cinnamon tart cinnamon wax tart um eight ounce that's enough for a title you've got like a couple of keywords in there we don't need quite a lot of home home fragrance or these things you can add elsewhere a delicious sense is unlikely to be searched for. You can have a look and see if it's a search term, but you want to focus down because you're going to make quite a lot of listings. Each listing only needs to have a couple of keywords in it. And then what you want to do is in the first line of your description, have the keywords from your title. You can just copy and paste your title into the first line. It's even better if you can have it just written in good English but having so if we're saying soy wax melts is what you're going for you have to say soy wax melts all in that order without any other words between it and again as a tag you would have soy wax melts you would have wax melts and you can add in the other terms that are easier to rank for cinnamon melts cinnamon tartlets have all these things in your tags and you can mention them in the description but if they're easy to rank for you don't have to have them in your title um, so this way because you're going to have a lot more items a lot more soy wax melts then you have a better chance for one of them ranking higher so I'd start to increase your listings and it's still you still have the option for styles and scents but each different listing is going to be optimized it's going to be for one like I mean this picture you have is of one of your scents so mention it aim on that and then the next listing could have this picture is the main picture and mention that scent oh excuse me hiccups now do you understand what I mean it's going to be like lots and lots of different listings that are all roughly the same thing but they're all supporting each other and in your description you can talk about as you do in your shop you can talk about that scent really big up that scent but say there's options for other scents and this just helps you helps you out there what have I missed what do you do if you can make more of something but you only make one for advertising um that depends entirely on how long it takes you to make something if 
for instance, my large needle felted sculptures, I can only make one of them. Really, if I tried to make another, it wouldn't be identical. So I only make one and I only list one and they are not going to sell millions of because there is only one. Oh here, you have a wee bear with glasses. I remember him, he's very cute. I love those glasses. You don't want ten of them lying around the house, so you have a you have a sample to show how do you handle the amount. Yeah. It depends on how long it takes you to make them. I will I have sitting here My cat bookmarks, I can make, I can duplicate fairly easily. They're not going to be identical to each other, but they're close enough. So in my shop, I have this listed and I have an amount of 10, or I believe it is. And I keep relisting these. These sell quite a lot, but I can make them relatively quickly. So I don't tend to, I don't have, tend to have time, but I don't, tend to have a stock of these. I just make them to order as they come in. So if you can make it to order, you just make sure, give yourself a shipping time of maybe a week to ship rather than just the one to two days. And yeah, you list, list that if you can make more, you know, have it in multiples because what that means is if it sells, it automatically relists and that keeps you high, higher on the ranking to do that. And Candle Supplier says the best way to sell more candles is to have more scents. I totally agree with that. Give people a choice. A choice in your in your niche, but absolutely they might find you through they might find you through the apple apple butter, was it? Apple I I can't remember. They might find you through that one, but they love a different fragrance and that way they totally they get a chance to find more and Sizzling Sense really does, if I drop these down again, they have an absolute ton of scents. This really sounds fantastic and that's where I think it would be really fantastic. Would it benefit to make 40 cents as individual listings for each size? Yes, um, for, again that's that's a lot to do. What I would do is work on each one individually trying to get the really really great pictures for them if you can. So say like you know let's focus in say you went for Lavender Dreams I hope this isn't going to make me think that it's buying just like, say you went for Lavender Dreams then get yourself a really good picture for Lavender Dreams and make a listing for Lavender Dreams in each size and that's great and then work on to the next one but yeah it will absolutely benefit you there's a sort of a law of diminishing returns I don't know that you would need 40 I would I would aim in on the most popular scents or the ones that you can get the best pictures for because Etsy does have a thing and it makes sense that yes the more you have the more chance you have of getting found but they also do this thing that there's a kind of ratio between the number of sales and the number of items you have in your shop so if someone only has one item and sells it a hundred times that's fantastic if they have a hundred items and only sell one that's a slightly less good shop or even if they have one item and sell it a hundred times compared to a hundred items and sell each one once the first shops slightly improved in the rankings so you don't want to go too far but when you get a few in definitely getting a few in will boost you up um, what I would be doing is making as I say making these individual listings keep adding one every day don't do a chunk all at once one every day or maybe two a day and see when you start ranking for the the big puppies when you start getting on page one for wax melts then maybe you can slow down peppermint candles that smell like peppermint hang on let's go and have a look I love peppermint I've, I've been drinking a lot of peppermint tea actually because I just gave up coffee um, peppermint would it 
I'm not seeing mint just now. <laughs> so, so there you go, Chris. Um, peppermint candles. That would be nice. Or chocolate peppermint. All oh, that. Yeah, chocolate peppermint would be awesome. But yeah, peppermint's good. I actually, years ago, and it's it's a lovely, bit of a worrying, but also a lovely thought. People were talking about what to do when your elderly dog starts having not such great sight anymore or if they go blind and you can have different scented candles in different rooms so they know which room they're in which I think is a bit lovely um, so do more listings on what's selling best yes absolutely um, definitely you'll, you'll know what have been your big sellers just now so pick them out just now absolutely that's yes I, I was forgetting you do have enough sales to have some some idea of of your good sellers I'm going to snoop because I can um, oh sweet snows of peppermint scent oh that sounds lovely so but there's there's an idea is your your names are wonderful but they don't always we want to think of what we're looking for in search so we were looking for peppermint there and couldn't find peppermint. You see how lazy people are. We're not going to go through every single thing. So you could have a listing of peppermint and in your description you explain that it's called sweet snow and in your picture you show sweet snow. But it's easy to find as peppermint if that makes sense. Have of course, yeah, because people pick individual things, so I can't actually see what's <laughs> what scents have been selling the most of. But you've been selling a lot of a good mixture of things. But yeah, the the scents that have been selling great, pick them out as individual listings just now. And also remember in your description, as as well as having the drop down at the side, you know, you could if it's if it's a listing, I'm going to say cinnamon again because I love cinnamon, but if it's a listing for cinnamon, in that listing you could also link and say if you like this you might also like my apple caramel because cinnamon and apple go well together, you know, so and put a link to that other listing to, to lead people through it because yeah seriously we are lazy lazy shoppers so if everything's there if you're reading down and it goes oh you like this try this people are more likely to click that than click through your drop down menu but right Chris I hope that helped anyway I, it was awesome to go through your shop and I actually have to do that because I love candles I love scents <laughs> I think you've got I think you've got a great start. You've got 25 sales already, which is actually really awesome. Hopefully those reviews will start rolling in. It's a total pig the way that all works out. I think your banner, everything looks great. Agave nectar. Oh, I've had agave as a sweetener. I don't know what that what it smells like. <laughs> That's interesting. Cool. Yeah, what is everyone's favourite scent? If you want to pop that in the in the comments. I should have thought of that. If you want to pop that in the chat. But anyway, I think this is an awesome looking shop. These emoji melts are great fun. And yeah, see the I don't know what you what you're supposed to call that emoji, but he would look great melting down with the, the teeth all showing like that. That would be an awesome photo. But yeah, see about either photo fusing up the photos or getting a bit of bit of help with that increase the listings and I think you're going to do great because to be honest your competition are doing well but they're a bit lazy their tags titles and everything aren't great their pictures aren't great so it's a tough niche but I, I really think you can do it it's you've you've got a different product from anyone else so thank you so much for letting me look at your shop so I think that'll do us there Oh, Bergemont, yes, I love that. Yes, um, I used to do a lot more with aromatherapy and sandalwood, sandalwood and Bergemont. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. But anyway, they were lovely. I love that as a mixture. It's quite a a more masculine type fragrance. I think I'm not much into floweriness, but that was awesome. Uh, Chris, you are most welcome. Thank you for letting me look in your shop. And... Panda, thank you so much. 
it is a lot of work, yes. Um, that was one of the things when I started on Etsy and everyone says you need more listings, I absolutely panicked because I thought how long does it take to make one listing? So I had to think think smart for how to make more listings. So I think some types, I'm, I'm not saying, I, I know candles and, and these things I know they it's a lot of work and to make to pour them as pretty as that as well is great. Um yeah, it's it's a lot of work, but you can reproduce it, you know, in in a day you can make a big chunk of things or you know, you can reproduce things, you can get into a wee manufacture of them. So it is a little bit easier to build up quite a lot of listings quickly without having to have a lot of stock and that that was the light bulb moment for me as well with I can have custom listings I don't need to have 300 items ready made I can make things for people when they ask although that's turning into a nightmare in that I am so behind with my orders so anyone that's waiting I am working through that I have I have dog bodies everywhere. <laughs> I'm working on them. Um, but yeah, it does get into a bit of a nightmare. Um, yeah, so any last questions? But I think I need to go and make my tea soon. So I'll leave you soon. But thank you so much for all joining me. It's been awesome. I love getting to chat to you. Getting to know some some faces I recognise. Some, some, some names here I know who've been great, great in the community, great in my little in my little group, um, some new people, which is great, and some I some YouTube friends, which is really awesome. So I love I love getting to know you all. And this is anyone anyone who's on on the YouTubes or anyone who's got your Etsy shop, like these live things it's nerve-wracking, but it's really worth it. You know, you can go live on Facebook and get chatting with your community. And it just, it really helps to get to know everybody. It's such an awesome thing. Terrifying, but awesome. I'm going to check out Berge Bergemont. You ch it's a lovely, like I say, it's not flowery. It's a lovely thing. And Samantha, thank you as well. It's really been great I think I think that will do us for now thank you so much I will totally try and get back same time next week but I'll let you know in the groups how I'm doing <laughs> with keeping to the time and but thank you so much for joining me if you want any kind of review then don't forget pop it in the Pam's Felting Friends uh, come along and chat there and thank you so much <laughs>